Hi, everyone. And uh, thank you so much, at least to the organizers, uh, for getting us all together. <clears throat> and thanks also for everyone here joining. Um, so briefly, um, I, I'm now sort of beginning to explore this topic of regulation and the Web3. I um, finished my PhD recently in the beginning of this year and um, in economic sociology and I was I've been working with ethnography and so far I was doing ethnographic research with these uh, small collectives um, developing blockchain platforms which means that it was pretty accessible we could say right these terrains and as I moved to this um, regulatory um, uh, dimension the access the ethnographic access becomes uh, a lot more tricky um, and so I'm interested in this idea of how the web 3 is entering the supervisional sphere of the states and regulatory authorities and banks um, this might be uh, a first tension to begin with in the sense that these are decentralized technologies that um, are, are at play but most mostly and, and many times they are permission ledgers so they are not entirely decentralized and public and participated as many other experiences happening on web3 nevertheless these um, the blockchain technology let's say is entering this sphere and I'm interested in seeing how that happens so uh, a bit kind of inspired by Katharina Pistor's idea of how um, the law is created a bit through the interplay between those that are legislating, those that hold capital, lawyers and innovators. Um, I think that at this point, we're in this historical moment of uh, very privilege to observe how this interplay is going on in um, regulating fintech initiatives. Uh, but of course, these are very difficult uh, terrains to access. Um, they are not so accessible even from a digital point of view for netnography, for instance, where you can you know, enter forums and discord and etc. These are very um, opaque and very closed uh, collaborations. But um, I, there are some categories and basically this is what I bring here, a few categories that I've identified based on the Portuguese context. And of course, these have their, their own brothers and sisters internationally. But I'm also interested in kind of launching this question of what exactly are the places where we can perform some ethnographic observation of this interplay. And so, for instance, we have these events like the Lisbon Web Summit right here in Portugal, but also others where these private and public actors get together and share a lot of, um, you know, expectations and strategies and have their secret meetings behind doors, investors and uh, startups, for instance. We have these this category of the council, which is also pretty interesting. And in, in the case of Portugal, we have, of course, a Portuguese alliance for blockchain that actually brings together uh, lawyers, banks, insurance companies, public private enterprises and big, um, big uh, players like IBM, Microsoft and Binance. Uh, these councils do a lot of lobby, we could say, at least um, to simplify that basically they are these groups of different actors bringing together their strategies and their hopes and trying to lobby. We have also this category of the sandbox. And in Portugal, for instance, we now have an initiative with, which is the Portugal FinLab, which is promoted by the three main uh, and three only regulatory authorities in, in Portugal. And what they do is basically they create a communication channel with innovators. And so it's, it's a contest where the selected projects will have personalized um, advisory from these regulating authorities with, with the projects that they select and that they will um, provide um, advice to these, to these selected projects. Um, and finally, there are also pilot projects, a category I'd say in the sense of being these first experiments 
and uh, there is a, a Portuguese unit of the European Blockchain Services Infrastructure. Uh, I, I guess most of you are familiar with it. And so these, this Portuguese unit is basically um, set up in a, a university, in one of uh, in one university. And um, it is also in partnership with one startup and they are starting to work on um, basically a technology for the public administration and for identity management. Um, and so these categories may, um, or at least I hope, offer some ground for ethnographic inquiry. Um, and still it might be complicated to access um, some of the events and some of the moments where the process actually takes place, but they do, um, at least they offer uh, something that you can kind of follow along and see how it evolves and perhaps contact uh, in particular with those from the private side, the fintech, the developers, the startups that are working closely with the regulators, with the regulating authorities, and um, to try to see where it goes. Um, and yeah, I guess this is what I wanted to share. And also, I'd be really happy to hear about any other ideas and any other categories that might be interesting for ethnographic observation in this respect about the interplay between, you know, regulating fintech and developing fintech. And uh, yeah, thank you very much.